Now to continue our talk about marrow on MRI, we're going to examine the T1 halo sign and the T2 halo sign. In T1 halo sign, what we see is a low signal lesion here, surrounded by a hyper-intense signal in its periphery. Since this is a T1 study, this hyper-intense signal surrounding this hypo-intense lesion is considered as a fatty replacement. If fatty marrow would replace your previous area of hypo-intense lesion, then it's a good sign. It means this lesion is responding to treatment. Now what about your T2 halo sign? In this sign, you have a center hypo-intense lesion surrounded by a periphery of hyper-intense signal. The hyper-intense signal is suggestive of an active disease or presence of edema. Hence, this is a bad sign. Next, let us talk about the progression of conversion. So within one person, you have a conversion within one bone, within a tubular bone, and you also have a pattern of progression from the extremities to the axial skeleton. For us to remember this progression, just think about an adult patient who needs to be who needs to undergo bone marrow biopsy. You want to get rich and cellular bone marrow where? In the axial skeleton, specifically in the pelvis, not in the extremities. So by remembering that, you know that the progression um, of conversion from red to marrow is first in the extremities and last in the axial skeleton. Now let's move on to the progression of conversion within a single tubular bone. Let's take um, this picture as our example. We're going to note the four areas in which progression um, occurs. So if we're, we're going to put a number four in the place where it is last to be converted into yellow marrow, it's going to be this part, the proximal metaphysis. We can remember this area because in a normal image, just like this, we normally can recall that there are patchy red marrow in this area. So if we can see red marrow in this area in an adult patient, therefore it is the last to be converted into yellow marrow. So now, you understand why we can designate the proximal metaphysis as number four. If the proximal metaphysis is number four, let's give the distal metaphysis as number three. Meaning, if in an adult patient there is a need to reconvert yellow marrow into red marrow um, due to an increased need for more blood cells, the distal metaphysis is going to be converted um, after the entire proximal metaphysis is reconverted. So we so our sequence would be distal uh, proximal metaphysis, then the distal metaphysis is going to get reconverted next. After this one, the next 
part of bone will be the diaphysis. The diaphysis is going to be reconverted next. And the last one which is going to reconvert is the epiphysis. So our mnemonic is MMDA. Or E. Metaphysis, metaphysis, diaphysis, and lastly, last would be the apophysis or epiphysis, as you can see in this uh, table. Last thing I want to talk about is the normal variation. There is some amount of variation from person to person, but within the same person, there should be a symmetry. So if you have an abnormality on one side, check if it is present on the other side. And if it is, it might just be part of normal variation. Number two, there is a curvilinear subchondral red marrow present even in adults. So this area, which is the subchondral bone, in this picture on your upper left, you see here that this is a P1 weighted study, and there is a little bit of red marrow in the subchondral region, not to be mistaken as um, abnormal marrow or vascular necrosis. And number three, focal islands of red marrow may give you some heterogeneity, um, in the osseous structures. Um, note that uh, this is part of a normal variation. However, we should always take into account the signal of that heterogeneous marrow signal. Focus again on your upper right. If you suspect any marrow to be abnormal, Always check if it is in, in the T1 study. Always check that the marrow should not be darker than muscle or the IV disc. For any marrow much darker than the muscle of this or this, that is an abnormal finding. And on steer, if you see a marrow which is much, much whiter than muscle, that too is abnormal. Okay, that ends our lecture for today. Thank you very much and I hope to see you again next time.